What is an array? An array is a data structure that stores multiple individual values of the same data type. Each of these values is an element or position of the array. In this example, an array called array values is declared that can store four integers. Initially, these integer values are 22, 44, 66, and 88. The array is a continuous block of memory. Each element is stored in adjacent memory locations. That makes it very efficient for the program to access each element in sequence much more so than if we were to use uh, multiple individual variables. It's also often more convenient for the programmer to treat multiple related values as a singular structure with one name. To access individual elements in the array, use the name of the array followed by a subscript in square brackets. The subscript is sometimes called the index or the position number. The subscript of the first element is always zero. That makes the subscript of the last element always less than one of the total number of elements. So in this case, since there's four elements, the last subscript is three. So let's step through an example where we create and use a simple array in C++. So in this example, we're going to use a, a basic array. We're going to declare it, we're going to input data into it, and then we're going to output data from it. So far in the sample program, uh, basically what I have is my opening comments. I'm including IO stream and using the standard namespace. And I've got just the uh, framework of a, of a main. Um, I have a section here where I'm going to be doing some declarations. Uh, a little bit of uh, information that I'm outputting as a header, my input phase, my output phase with a little bit of uh, header information as well, and the end of the program. So there's really nothing going on yet. So we'll start building this. So first off, before I declare the array, I'm going to declare a companion named constant. This named constant is going to store the uh, number of elements I want in my array. In this case, it's a, a number of tests that students take, and I'm making that equal to four. Unlike C Sharp or uh, other languages you may be familiar with, uh, C++ does not treat arrays like objects, and therefore there's no methods or properties that you can use that are built into the to an array class. Um, so we have to have something to keep track of the size of the array for when we uh, access and process it. The next thing we'll do is actually declare the array. So the basic format is the type of array it is, okay, so integer or double, or later on when we get into uh, classes, it could be a class name. The name of the array following our uh, identifier, uh, our naming conventions in our style guide. Uh, followed by square brackets and a either a named or a literal constant that indicates the size of the array. So in our case, we're going to create an array of doubles called student test grades. Um, and there's uh, four uh, student test grades that I want to keep track of in the array. So I'm using this companion variable. Okay. Um, that way, if I have to recompile my program later on uh, where there's five tests, I can just simply change that in one location and the rest of my program should work okay. Now, in this example, we're not initializing the array to any particular values. Uh, we'll deal with that in a later uh, example. So right now, I have four double variables that are located in sequence in memory and all of them are called student test grades. So it'll be student test grade 0, 1, 2, and 3. So the next thing I want to deal with is uh, uh, input into the array. I'll prompt the user to enter in a grade for test 1, and then I'll use the CN object to uh, grab position 0 of the array. Pretty straightforward stuff. Now, of course, what we're not doing in this example is any kind of validation. Um, and uh, that's a bit of a problem. So in our last uh, unit, 
uh, we actually created a, a header file that had some useful validation functions. So what I'd like to do is actually modify this to make use of those functions. The th first thing I'll do is scroll back up to the top here and I'll, I'll add an include. So I'll include uh, my input validation header file that I created from Unit 3 Lesson 4. While I'm here, I also notice that I'm missing uh, IO manip, so I'll add that in too. So IO manip is used for output formatting such as set precision, fixed, and uh, set width, which we're going to use in this example. So now I'm going to go back to my input phase. I'll uh, highlight these lines here and uh, comment them out. Now I'll replace them with some better code using our validation functions. So I'm still prompting for test one, um, but this time the syntax is a little bit different. What I want to do is I want to access position zero of the student test grades array, um, but I'm using my validation namespace followed by the name of the function, get valid double. And a valid grade for a test I've decided is somewhere between zero and 100. So that's how my get valid double works. Okay, so if I put in some text or something out of range, uh, that function will deal with doing that error handling, uh, which is convenient for me. Ultimately, what gets back, sent back to student test grades in position zero is uh, a, a valid grade. Now, this is all well and good, but this is not really any better than having individual variables. If I'm gonna go through and, and have, you know, please enter grade for test one, do this, please enter grade for test two and do this. If I had 100 tests, that would get very tedious. So it's a, a far better idea to do this kind of thing in a loop. Um, so I'll comment these lines out. We'll actually end up deleting them later. but And uh, we'll do the same thing, but we'll uh, use a loop this time. So this is a way better way to deal with arrays. Um, a for loop is ideally suited for dealing with an array. Um, I have a, a counter or an index number that I create. I've just declared it as part of, uh, just for the scope of the loop here, and I've called it test index. Uh, so test zero, one, two, and three. Well, that's not quite right, but um, I'm, I'm making them correspond to the actual element number or subscript. As long as this test index is less than the number of tests, this loop will continue, and then each time it's increasing the test index by one. So when I prompt for the test number, uh, you know, C out, please enter the grade for test, and then I have embedded here the test index plus one. I want, I want the prompt to actually read test one, test two, test three, rather than test zero, one, two, three. Okay, so uh, that's how I deal with that. And then when I get the test number, rather than hard code the subscript, I've used this variable. Okay, so this is what makes using an array convenient and efficient. And then of course I'm calling my get valid double function to do that. So now I'm actually going through and getting all four tests using this uh, very efficient little loop structure. So let's try this out so far. No compile errors, I'm happy about that. Let's grab my output window here. Uh, please enter a grade for test one. So uh, let's try uh, blogo. Doesn't like that. Okay, and all that validation is happening in my header file. Uh, this time I'll put in 101. Uh, doesn't like that. Uh, and I'll put in 100 right on the button. Uh, test two we didn't do so well at. We only had 15%. Uh, uh, and test three, let's say we did uh, better but not great. We went 55 and a half percent. And test four, um, well, let's uh, give ourselves an A for that. Okay, so we haven't output the array yet, but we can see that the uh, input uh, seems to work. Okay, and of course I would test that a, a lot more to make sure, but um, that's basically where we are so far. So let's deal with our output. Okay, so in the output section, there's no real processing we're doing here. Um, I display a little bit of an output header. You know, here are the students' uh, test grades. Um, I want them uh, to uh, um, one decimal place, so that's how I've got that set up. 
And like uh, the input, I'm going to use a loop to display all the test scores nicely formatted um, for output. Okay, so we'll use a loop again. And then for each of the test uh, um, grades in the, that should say grades, uh, in the array, so I'm setting it up using an identical for loop. In fact, I copied and pasted this for loop because I have a test index. I want to go from zero to the number of tests each time going up by one. It's the exact same I did for the input loop. So each time I want to display the test number followed by the test grade in a field width of five characters. So here's my C out. So test number, the test index plus one. So I'm using an offset there. So it's one, two, three, four rather than zero, one, two, three. Um, set W5, that basically says that the next output is going to be in a field width of five characters. Um, this will make sure that the numbers line up nicely. So five characters is how much it would take to display 100.0. Um, so if it uh, ends up being, say, 55.0, uh, it will be space 55.0. All right. So um, let's try that out. So I'll run it again. Um, I won't worry so much about the validation, but I will put in for the first one, 100. Um, I'll put in a single digit, 8. I'll put in a two digit, um, 55, 66. And there we are. Here are the students' test grades. Test 1, nicely lined up, 8. Uh, 100, 8, 55, 66, and that's the end of my program. So in this sample, just to review, uh, we went through, we declared not only the array itself, but also a companion constant. Uh, we talked about how to access individual elements. Uh, we ended up using an input loop and how to set that up, uh, as well as an output loop and how to set that up. So that gives you the very basics of using an array.